Happy Mother's Day, everybody. To remember my mom, today on Sports Card Investor, I have dusted off my old sports card albums from when I was a kid. The cards that she took me to card shops to purchase, and I'm gonna show you the best of these cards today. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. This episode, this is, this is one that's really special to me. And I have had a lot of fun the last couple of days preparing for this episode because I took out all of my cards that I had as when I was a kid and went through those cards to pull the best cards out for this episode. In fact, take a look. So here in my closet, buried under my clothes, I still have the original boxes of cards that I held all of my cards in when I was a kid. Look at these, these, are, these have aged the test of time. Look at that, I've even got some unopened wax in there. Look, I got another one of these guys here. It's absolutely crazy. All that red, that is all 1990s Donruss. That was my set. I got all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Let me show you the best of it right now. All right, so we're gonna get into that in just a second. But first, I wanna remind you about the Instagram contest we are currently running. It ends tomorrow. It ends Monday at midnight. The contest is available to everybody, not just members. Anyone out there, you can go be part of the contest. We're giving three months of our Market Movers data tool plus three months of our full membership program away for free plus a Luka Doncic rookie card, an optic Luka Doncic rookie card. We're giving all of this away for free. It's worth over $200 to one person who goes to our Instagram page, Sports Card Investor on Instagram, and who finds the post that we're telling about this contest, who likes the post, who follows us on Instagram, and who comments three of their friends in the post, tags three of their friends in that particular post. So. Pause the video, go to Instagram now if you haven't already, follow us, like the post, tag three of your friends. I would love to hopefully give you the three months of Market Movers plus the Luka Doncic card. All right, so today is a little bit of a trip down memory lane, remembering and celebrating our mothers. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my mom and some of the cards that these are, I'm excited to show you these cards today. This is, <laughs> these are, I've, I've pulled out some, cards that I didn't even remember that I had. Some of these cards that you're gonna see today are cards that I have literally not set my eyes on in 30 years, in 30 years. And I just pulled them out of boxes over the last couple of days to go through them for the first time. And I've actually got some cards that kind of surprise me, some cards that are pretty decent that I prob probably should have had in top loaders. And I didn't, I just had them in cardboard boxes. But um, I'm excited to show these to you. And also my team, my sports card investor team is going to give uh, a little bit of a celebration of their moms in this episode uh, as well and how their moms help them get into sports card collecting. Uh, my mom, uh, Vanda Bayless, uh, she was an absolutely, absolutely incredible mom. Uh, and I lost her last year to brain cancer. Um, it was an incredibly difficult time as you can imagine. Uh, my mom was fantastic. She was a huge supporter of me and everything I did. And honestly, one of the things that makes me most sad about losing my mom is that she, she would have gotten such a laugh out of all of this sports card investor stuff that I'm now doing. Because I launched all of this last summer and she passed away last spring. So she never knew that I was doing any of this. But what she did know was that I was a huge, huge baseball card collector as a kid. And that's what would be so funny to her. What would be so funny to her was that this, this passion that I had as a kid that she helped support. She helped support by taking me around to card shows and by taking me around to card shops all the time. She helps fuel this passion. And I think she would think it was so damn cool that, uh, you know, and funny that I, I'm now into this professionally again as an adult. Um, 
My mom was an incredible woman. She was a trailblazer. A lot of my business skills I learned from her. A lot of my entrepreneurial skills I learned from her. She was one of the first women lawyers in, in Sarasota, really in Florida. There weren't many women lawyers. She went to law school. Uh, she was the uh, one of the founders of the Sarasota County Women's Lawyers Association in Florida. She was a huge volunteer guardian ad litem. Uh, and she, in fact, won a statewide award in Florida uh, for a pro bono volunteer of the year uh, for the state um, in the early 1990s because of all the great volunteer work she did. She was truly, truly an inspiration. Vanda Bayless, uh, an amazing, amazing woman. Um, her impact on me was profound and her impact on my sports card desire was profound as well. She would always support me through crazy things that I got into and crazy passions and crazy endeavors that I had. And sports cards were the biggest when I was a kid. They were the biggest. Uh, they dominated my life when I was a kid. And so it was so much fun to open back up these boxes of sports cards. I, I wanna show some of these to you. I have to tell you one story real quick. My first job ever was at a sports card store. Right when I turned 14, this is how crazy into sports cards I was. Right when I turned 14 years old and I was eligible to work as a minor in Florida, the very first thing I wanted to do was go get a job at a sports card store. Like I could not wait till the day I turned 14 so I could actually legally work and go apply for jobs at sports card stores. That's how, that's how sports card crazy I was. And I did, and I got a job at a local sports card store. And honest to God, it was one of the most exciting things in my life. And the very first day I got to go to that sports card store for work, that was one of the most exciting days in my life. It unfortunately had a sad ending. It was the only day of my life that I ever worked at a sports card store. And what happened was I went into the sports card store as 14 years old and the owner left me the store. It was just me that day. And these two kids, probably 18 years old, like older high school kids came into the store and one of them came up to the counter and started asking me to see like a million cards, you know, that were in the card case. And so I'm pulling cards out. Well, the other's got a backpack on and he's, he's going around the corner into the other part of the store and just cleaning the store out. And I was 14. I didn't even know this was a possibility. I didn't even know that this, like people, I didn't, it didn't even register to me that this could even possibly happen. So of course, when the owner came back and discovered what happened and that he had been cleaned out of inventory, uh, that was my last day working in the sports card store. My one and only day as a sports card store. But I remember my mom drove me to work that day and my mom picked me up from work that day. And you can imagine I was pretty devastated when my mom picked me up from work that day. I was so excited going and so devastated coming back home. But my mom held my hand through all of that and she lifted me up and she always, you know, always wanted the best for me and to push me on to the next thing. Um, and here I am all these years later uh, and, and uh, getting, getting to do the sports card thing again, getting to work in a sports card store of different sorts, right? Getting to do this channel um, and doing it the right way. And it's, uh, it's, it's a celebration of her. Anyway, thank you for thank you for taking the moment to enjoy that memory with me. It, it's really special uh, to me uh, to just be able to talk about my mom, and and uh, I'm so sad that I've lost her. But um, thank you for taking that moment with me. Um, okay, let me let me show you some cards because this is what I'm excited about doing. I went through these cards. This is like let's just get right into it. This is this is fun. This is fun. So I found this was one of the piles that I pulled out. Um, and I'm just going to show these to you. A walk down memory lane. I was an Astros fan. This is a Craig Biggio rookie card, I believe. That was from, uh, what is that? Is that 89 Donruss? That was a Craig Biggio rookie card. I was an Astros fan. That's a Barry Larkin rookie card, I believe, from 87 Tops. I found this, uh, found a little Michael Jordan there from NBA Hoops. Notice none of these cards were stored well, right? <laughs> Look at the little corners. I, you know, and of course, you know, like a lot of us, we didn't necessarily, um, Think about storing cards back then. Now this one, this one I'm actually really excited about. I've not looked this up to see if this is worth anything. You know, the, at first I just saw it as an Elway card, like no big deal, but then I flipped it over. It's a Manning rookie card on the back. I have, I, lit, I, have, I literally just found this. Like I just found this in that giant cardboard box full of cards. I just found this card. 
But that's pretty sweet. Like, I, I you know, with how, I, I mean, it could be worth nothing. I literally have no idea. I have not looked it up yet. I got to go to my Market Movers data tool and look this guy up, right? Um, I remember this Nolan Ryan 5,000 Ks. 90 Donruss was a big set for me. I, I have I have the whole set. I just, I bought packs of 90 Donruss like they were going out of style. I have so many 90 Donruss cards. And this one was a big chase card in 90 Donruss. Uh, Sammy Sosa rookie. I found a couple of Griffey rookies from 89 Donruss. Of course, you know, once again, I, I didn't store any of my cards in top loaders or anything because we weren't worried about the condition back then. It was just, I was taking these to school every day. Um, <laughs> Ozzy Canseco, the Canseco, uh, Canseco brother. I remember, you remember Jerome Walton? He was a big rookie prospect at the time. He was, this was a chase card. Jerome Walton was a chase card. Uh, never really, you know, never really had the career that people thought he was going to. But this was maybe one of the first rookie bust types of cards. I don't know, from that era. I was a Broncos fan as a kid. So Craig Morton, he was a little bit before my time. He was the Broncos quarterback, you know, back in the 70s, uh, late 70s, I think early 80s. Um, I don't know how I got that card. That's an old one, but that's his first. I think that's his first card with the Broncos. Uh, man, Len Dykstra, he was a crazy dude. I have a lot of 86 tops, a lot of 86 tops. Um, that was a uh, a big collection for me. Uh, just think that thought that was a cool card. I love this card. I love that card. The Bash Brothers. The Bash Brothers. Remember the Bash Brothers? That was such a fun card. That was such a fun time. I love that card. Oh, man. Rafael Palmero. Rafael Palmero. That was before the... Uh, before the, well, I mean, I don't know if that was before the steroids. That was before we knew about the steroids. Um, uh, this one I pulled, well, first of all, Jeff George, you know, that that was, you know, another NFL expectations never quite met story. But this was one of those wild card cards. Do you guys remember wild card? You remember that set? That was a pretty crazy set. That was fun. And then this uh, Rocket Ismail, man, I loved watching that guy. He was one heck of a player, wasn't he? Uh, classic. Uh, I remember these classic cards. In fact, I got some more to show you in a second. That was a crazy set. Leaf was huge. Remember this? The Travis Fryman rookie in Leaf. This was a massive chase card. I was so excited when I got this Travis Fryman card in Leaf. I think this was his rookie. I remember Travis Fryman's rookie in Leaf was a massive chase card. And I think that was it. Um, I don't even remember what type of card this one was. Select. Score select. I've forgotten about this set. Interesting. And then look what I found. I found a couple of Jordans here in my box. I mean, again, not preserved at all because why would I preserve sports cards when I was a kid, right? I just, it wasn't a thing. But I found that Jordan there. I found this uh, <laughs> random Dale Earnhardt card. Another Jordan from Skybox. Uh, a Jordan from NBA Hoops. Um, Mike Mucina, top prospect. That was a chase card. Remember that? Uh, people were crazy about him that year. 91 upper deck. I uh, found a John Franco. That's a, I think that's a John Franco rookie card. What is that? 85 tops. I think this is 85 tops. Yep. Frank Thomas rookie card. That was a big one back in the day as well. Emmett Smith rookie card. I love the Emmett Smith rookie card because of course Emmett Smith was my boy, Florida Gator. Uh, so I loved, I love collecting Emmett Smith and man, what a career he had. Uh, Vince Coleman, I think that's Vince Coleman's rookie card. Leaf 86, I think that is, yep, that's Vince Coleman's rookie card. I love the Cardinals. They had Vince Coleman. He was, gosh, you know, so I used to play a lot of RBI baseball. <laughs> and Vince Coleman and Ozzie Smith on the Cardinals. And didn't they have that pitcher who pitched uh, uh, sideways on the Cardinals, like the sidearm pitcher? I forget who that was. Who did they have? Didn't they? Well, in RBI baseball, didn't the Cardinals have the pitcher who pitched with a sidearm that was really difficult to hit? Am I remembering that correctly? They were the team to play with in RBI baseball. Vince Coleman was so fast that he could hit any ball and you would it was a hit. You'd get a first base instantly. No one could catch him. Greg Olson. Greg Olson, that was a chase card, right? That was a big chase card. Bowman Dawson. Uh, he is the godfather of uh, Tyler, who was on my team. And he was a great, great player. And I found that card today. Pretty cool to have that card. So check this out, guys. This was, remember this set? Remember Classic Baseball? This was the very first Classic set. And I, I, I had a complete set of this. 
I think I had traded away the big chase card in here that got to crazy money. I remember when I was a kid, it became worth crazy amounts of money, like a few hundred bucks, which of course back then was crazy amounts of money that there was a, I believe was a Bo Jackson rookie card in there that everyone was chasing. And I also have, by the way, the, the I think what is the next set of it. Unfortunately, I think I traded the Bo Jackson away when I was a kid. So I actually don't have the most valuable card in that one anymore. So I had a complete set and now I'm missing the one card that everyone was chasing back then. But the funny thing was, I remember I bought this, these cards actually were part of a game. They weren't meant to be like true sports cards. They were part of a game. And I remember going to, I bought the actual game in a toy store. And then I found out later that the cards were actually worth a lot of money. So I remember those. All right, you guys want to see, <laughs> this is funny. You guys want to see my first attempt at sports card investing from when I was a kid. And the one of the biggest sports card investing mistakes perhaps I ever made. This was my first attempt at sports card investing when I was a kid. I decided that Juan Gonzalez, Juan Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers was going to be the next great thing. And so I did exactly what I do today, which is if I zero in on a player who I think is going to be the next big thing, I buy a lot of his cards. Look at this. And Juan Gonzalez was my guy. I thought Juan Gonzalez was going to be the guy for the Texas Rangers. And so I literally, that's my first foray into sports card investing when I was a kid. When was this? In 1991. In 1991, I loaded up on Juan Gonzalez cards. I thought that I was going to get rich on Juan Gonzalez cards. Look, by the way, look at these top loaders. I've had these cards. These cards, these are the original top loaders from 1991. That is the original label from the sports card store that I bought these cards at in 1991. So you can see how yellowed these top loaders are because these, like literally, I have not removed, these are 1991 top loaders. These have sat in my basement and in my attics of my various places I've lived in my fraternity house room in college. They sat there in these boxes, in these top loaders. It's really funny. And here's the other crazy thing, by the way. I doubt this card is even worth $4 today. <laughs> so what I, I, it clearly shows what I paid for it in 1991. And I don't think it is worth $4 today. But I do remember my mom taking me to baseball card shops and baseball card shows in Sarasota, Florida to buy Juan Gonzalez cards. And you know what? You know what's funny? Juan Gonzalez was actually a great player. He actually had a good career. And I recently read an article that was talking about like the 10 most underrated players in Major League Baseball history. And Juan Gonzalez was on the list. So I kind of was right about Juan Gonzalez. Uh, except for the fact that his cards never did much because, you know, it, it <laughs> he had a great career, but nobody really seemed to care. Uh, hey, here's some other interesting ones I found. These ones I actually moved into top loaders uh, when I found them uh, earlier this week. Uh, and obviously those, the rest of those, I need to move some of those into top loaders as well. But remember Pacific Picks? That's a Thurman Thomas rookie card, Pacific Picks. Another Sammy Sosa rookie there. Thur another Thurman Thomas rookie. Those were interesting cards. You remember those? High Pro. High Pro cards. Jeff George. Jeff George rookie card in High Pro. Bernie Williams rookie. Tim Hardaway rookie. There's a Jordan that I found. All-Star Game 89 Jordan. It's Man, it's fun going through these old cards. Uh, Ricky Nateel. I loved Ricky Nateel. He also, by the way, was a Florida Gator. Receiver for the Gators. Went to the Broncos. This was his rookie card with the Broncos. Uh, so I was a fan of Ricky Nateel for that reason. Tom Gordon, he was a big... Remember these cards? Remember these ones? That's a Roger Clemens. These were like the jam back in the day. People love these. Sport flicks, they were called. These 3D cards. Remember those? Man, those were fun. Let's see, what is this? Uh, 89 score, I think this was. I had a lot of these. Yeah, 89 score, I believe that set was. Was it 89 or 88? That was 88 score. I, have a, I think I have a complete set of 88 score. Bo Jackson rookie card. I think that was his rookie card um, in Donruss. Another Emmett rookie, Will Clark rookie, couple Ken Griffey Juniors. You know, just, man, just kind of, oh, I collected this one because look at the spelling of Jeff. Oh, guys, check that one out. Check that one out. That was, that right there was a dream card for me when I was a kid. It really was. I loved that card and I traded. I, I, I didn't pull that. I had to do a bunch of trading for that card. 
I forget what I traded for it, but I remember I traded a lot of cards because this, especially back then, that was worth a lot. I think it was worth more back then than it is today. Although recently the price of this bow card has gone on a run. Um, so it, it, it has become worth more uh, than it used to be for sure. But man, what a what a what an awesome card. And I traded a lot of cards for that back in the day. I was so happy when I got that card. That was maybe my personal biggest chase card back in the day. Uh, <laughs> no more Garcia Para rookie card upper deck. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. A couple more things to show you. I, uh, I found some complete sets that I owned. Look at this. I've got a complete set of 89 hoops, which actually now would be worth going through and pulling a couple of the cards like the Jordan out of there. I found a complete set that I owned of, of 90s Skybox. Again, probably not preserved real well because, you know, they just were in these boxes and they're shifting around in the boxes and everything like that. I found this special promo card of Barry Sanders and Joe Montana. This was an upper deck promo card. Um, and these actually have some value if they're in gem mint condition, which I believe these are. So they may be worth, well, maybe that's got a centering issue there, but the corners and everything on these are super sharp. Um, look at this old screw down case. Do you remember the old screw down cases before they had like the magnetic, you know, touch cases and all that stuff? Uh, these were promo cards. They weren't part of the regular set, card one and card 500. I remember that was like just for dealers. And I remember I, there was a car dealer in Sarasota that had gotten that as a freebie from Upper Deck and had, and had uh, sold it to me. And then finally, I found these. I found these and I actually think that these could, could have some sneaky value. This is uh, an early set of soccer cards. So I went to London with my mom and my, my whole family. We went to London in 1986. And of course I was super into sports cards. So we went to um, Harrods and you could see the actual, the price sticker on there from Harrods in London in 1986. We went to Harrods and she let me buy some sports cards. And of course all they had in London were soccer cards. So I bought soccer cards in 1986. And we know that soccer cards are kind of getting hot again. So this is what these guys look like. And I mean, they're in, they're in pretty good shape. And there's, I, I've been able to, I've looked around like on eBay and there's almost none of these in existence. So I don't know, it'd be kind of interesting to see if there's, uh, you know, if there's, if there's any value in these. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool set. And then another one of football greats. So uh, anyway, yeah, so there you go. So. Anyway, hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that trip down uh, memory lane. And listen, I have one of the really cool things about what I'm doing now with Sports Card Investor. One of the things my mom would be proud of is the fact that I have been able to build this company up quickly enough where I've been able to hire some employees to join my team to provide great jobs during a time, as everyone knows, when you know unemployment's going up and jobs can be a little bit hard to come by. And it's thanks to you. It's thanks to all of you who watch this channel. It's thanks to everybody who subscribes to my membership program. You have helped me and helped us be able to provide some awesome jobs uh, to, to folks who I've hired in the last few months to help make my membership program even better. And I wanna bring a couple of them on right now to share their own memories of their moms and how their moms got them into sports card collecting. Hello, sports card investors. Kelly Francis here. Wanted to give a huge shout out to a very special woman in my life, my mom. Um, on Mother's Day, I just wanted to thank you for all of the times that you supported me while I played my sports as I was younger, as well as taking me to the card shop almost every weekend when I was a kid so I could collect Pokemon cards. You didn't understand it, but you let me do it. And um, for that, I say, Thank you for my Machamp first edition hologram. This one's for you, mom. Hello, everyone. This is Tyler from the Sports Card Investor team. And I just want to give a huge shout out to my mom for Mother's Day. You know, I'm so thankful for all the years that she took me to the different card shows and the different card stores in the area. And I honestly don't, you know, think I would be where I'm at today if it wasn't for her. So I just wanted to give her a shout out for Mother's Day and just tell her that I love you. It's Tyler from Sports Card Investor. I just want to share a message about my mom and how much I've appreciated her. Uh, she isn't exactly the biggest sports fan, and I don't think she's ever really understood why sports cards would be exciting to anybody. However, she has been extremely supportive of me in everything that I've done in my life, including most recently signing up to join the Sports Card Investor team. And uh, just a little something that I keep. Uh, this is an Anthony Hardaway uh, plaque, dual plaque of some pretty, I don't know, inconsequential cards uh, from my childhood. But 
you know, my mom always picked up packs for me when it was my birthday. She knew uh, that I was really itching to rip something and I had a big Penny Hardaway collection when I was little. So I um, still have it to this day. I uh, really love my mom and wishing her the happiest Mother's Day. I just want to give a big thank you and I love you to my mother, Jeanette. She's been just amazing, obviously, in my life. And thank you for not throwing away all my cards. You know, from the late 80s, uh, early 90s, I appreciate that. I'm sure I still have to get some in the attic, but uh, who knows if they're worth anything. But I really appreciate you supporting me um, through all these crazy ventures and certainly um, when I was younger as a kid to have all the cards and do all the things and go all the shows. You've been great and I uh, can't thank you enough. Love you, Mom. Ah, love that. Love that. What an episode. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. I really appreciate it. I hope you are having a great Mother's Day with your mom. I really do. And just a final reminder, if you have not entered the Instagram contest yet, go do that now. Go to Sports Card Investor on Instagram. Find the post where we're talking about the contest. Follow Sports Card Investor, like the post, and tag three of your friends. You got to do this before Monday night. I want to hopefully give you the three months of my membership and Market Movers and that Luka Doncic rookie. Have a great Mother's Day, everybody. I hope your week gets off to a wonderful start, and I'll see you back in a couple days for my next episode. Take care.